On Wall Street, you're only as good as your last trade. So what happens when you make a bad one? Sally Krawcheck rose to the CEO and CFO jobs at some of the most well-known investment banks, becoming one of the industry's most powerful women in the 2000s. Here's her big money mistake. So you obviously did a lot of things right as you climbed the ranks. But during that period, when you look back, you've also made some mistakes. What's the one big mistake that you made? I failed to diversify. I did not diversify, diversify, diversify the equity that I received as part of my compensation at Citigroup. What happened? This was, I was getting paid when I was at Citi as the senior leadership team was, much of the bonus was in stock. As I got the stock, I never sold very much of it. And so as a result of that, my net worth uh, going into the financial crisis, you know where this is going, of 07, 08, was Citigroup stock, stocks, and my job. I was expecting to continue to work and earn, and so Citigroup stock had gone way down, my equity portfolio has gone down, and what I had never thought through is if those things happen, I could lose my job. I made one bet as I was building the equity and the wealth. I've made one bet, and that is on the financial services industry. And my net worth declined by 80 plus percent from going into the financial crisis to during the financial crisis. You worked at Sanford C. Bernstein before Citi and you had equity there as well, right? right? Well, that got rolled into Citi stock. You take a job at a new place, often on Wall Street, they will buy out your unvested shares at the company before. So, I mean, the story just keeps getting worse because it wasn't just that I was paid in Citi stock or you know, had equities in my portfolio, that my job went away. It's that the wealth that I had built, you know, the equity that I'd accumulated at Bernstein had rolled into Citi stock, so it was, it was like double, triple, quadruple exposure in many ways, was, or felt that way. Was, a lot. was it unusual that you did not cash out? You mentioned that you wanted to show you were loyal, but is that something that people talked about? Is that a known thing? It wasn't explicit that we shouldn't sell it, but it was sort of implicit. We're in it together. We're building this company. We're bullish about it. We're driving the future. Was there a specific moment when it crystallized for you how big of a mistake it was to not have diversified? Sitting at my desk, and we always had the business news in the background, and I look back at the TV and I think, well, wow, that woman's about to lose her job. And what registered is, ah, that poor woman, great outfit. And then I'm like, oh, that's me. It was a picture of you. <laughs> it was me. You were looking at B-roll of yourself. At least I, at least I like the suit, you know? <laughs> that's why you was, thought it was cute. If you, you just haven't lived until you can, you know, really feel how your stomach can drop all the way into your toes and you just, your stomach is in your toes, and you're like, oh. I did get out in the teens for much of my stock, and the reason is because the new CEO at the time invited me to leave. Um, and when he invited me to leave, I said, well, I'm not sitting here on this stock. Mm -hmm. What do you think you've learned about yourself in this experience? I'm sort of proud of the way I handled it. And um, that you survived it? You kept your perspective? Survived it. Um, I think, Scarlett, there were several extra glasses of wine but I didn't melt down, I didn't have a fit, I didn't take it out on my family. I mean, it was just like, huh. Gotta right? get through this. Yeah. You know, and I've learned the lesson and now I will apply the lesson as opposed to, you know, continue to do it, so. But did it haunt you for a while? No. No? No, it didn't. You were able to, to look at it very pragmatically. You know, I mean, look, we are privileged and fortunate. And now that I've learned this, what can I do to help others? Let's talk about how this has influenced how you've set things up now, because you've started your own business, Elvest, which is a women-first financial services company. Have you learned your lesson in terms of diversifying enough so that you're not super concentrated in Elvest or in financial services? Gosh, no. Well, first of all, with Elvest, because it's a startup, I don't have those worries about making a lot of money and what I'm going to do with it. Those worries do not exist for me. But what I do see, you know, I feel it play out again and again. We have a private wealth business at Elvest, and so, we're engaging with and talking to some very successful women, many of whom work in tech, mm -hmm. many of whom are startup CEOs, and we end up having this conversation again and again, which, you know, when the tech stocks were high, I don't want to sell, I don't want to pay the taxes, I want to send the signal that I'm loyal, and now that the stocks are down, again, you see the, whoa, well, I'll think about selling it when it gets back to, you get attached to these things. Mm -hmm. so there was never a point in time as an analyst, as a business leader, where I said, oh, the future is so clear. It's always been uncertain. And because of that, the message and the learning is the market may or may not be efficient, 
but it's sure is smarter than you as an individual. And so for you to say, you know what, I'm gonna stay in this stock, either because it's up or because it's down, what you're essentially saying is, I know more than the market does. Clearly, you were in a privileged position because you got paid in equity, and a lot of senior managers and senior executives get paid in equity or stock options. What about people who don't have that as part of their pay? They just get a cash component. What's the lesson for people who yeah. don't get paid that way? You want investing to be boring, truly, mind-numbingly. Paint on the wall drawing boring. Painfully boring. If you are bragging at a cocktail party about your, your big trading gains, you, you just recognize that you don't get to have all of that and not have to have your tail between your legs at some point. You can't say, I'll just take the upside right, of investing. I, I won't take the mistakes. You, you can't do that unless you know, you're in a diversified investment portfolio. Mm -hmm.